Hey guys, in this video we're just going to look at a bunch of different examples using uh, this theorem, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x equals 1. So sometimes these can be kind of tricky, so let's just get right into them. These are the four problems I'm going to do in this video. If this isn't what you're looking for, I do have another video of maybe slightly trickier problems. These are a little bit more um, straightforward, maybe more basic. So if there's one that you're looking for, you can just fast forward to it. Another way you could use this video, you could always always use this as a way to quiz yourself, and then you've got all the solutions. Okay, so here's the deal. For this video, our goal is to use this theorem, or equivalently, this one. So we're going to just be kind of looking for basically ways to make things look like this. So I'm going to reference this a few times. So this first problem is actually a, a pretty standard, basic type of application of this theorem. So notice how this is kind of set up. This is sine of 3x over 5x. So this isn't quite what our theorem is, right? So this is saying that you have to have just x over x. Now, if you don't have that, then what you really want, you want this, whatever is in here, you want it to be the exact same down here. So math is very literal in this way, and so this is not quite what we need, right? So instead of this being a 5, if I want this to look exactly like it does up here, I want this to really be a 3. So what you have to do with these types of problems is you have to manipulate. So what we're going to do then is we're going to um, bring the 5 out for now, because it's just kind of noise. And we're going to focus on this part of the problem. So I've got this sine of 3x over x. Now, like I said, I really need a 3 down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom by 3, and that gets me what I need. But it's a fraction, so whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. So we're going to have to multiply it on top and on bottom. So what I get then is I have this 1 fifth out here, and then I've got this limit. So now this is 3 times sine of 3x over 3x. And this, this 3 here, I don't really need it, so I can move it out in front if I want to. Now, you don't have to move these things out. I'm just kind of doing this to make this just more, more clear what we're looking at here. But in your own work, if you end up not factoring that out, that's, that's fine too. So now, I've got what I need. So this is more in line with what the theorem says, right? So I need the exact same thing here and here. That's what this theorem is getting at. So now I've got 3x and 3x. So what that means is when you have the exact same thing here and here, don't add something onto the theorem that's not there. All this theorem says is that this has to equal 1. So as long as you have the same thing here and here, this whole thing will equal 1. So what that means is a lot of times people think, oh, well, now there's a 3 in there, so there has to be a 3. The theorem didn't say that, right? So this will just equal 1. So my answer then will look like this. I've got 3 fifths times 1, so the final answer in this case is just going to be 3 fifths. Moving on to the next problem. So as you just inspect this, so we don't see any sign in here, right? But basically what you want to get in the habit of is first just rewriting kind of these functions in terms of sine and cosine. That's just kind of a, a best practice when you're trying to figure out how to evaluate a limit. So this is going to be cosine of 2x over sine of 2x, that's what cotangent is. And then this is going to be 1 over sine of 3x. Okay, so now as you take a look at this, so here's a hint that you would want to use this theorem. Here's, here's how you know. So think about if you plug 0 into this. If you plug 0 into this, you will get zeros in the denominator, which is a problem, and then you will also get a 0 here, so you get this 0 over 0. So that's what's kind of telling you that you have to use that theorem, okay? So here's kind of your goal then. Your goal is if I have 2x here, what I really need is I need a 2x on top of this, okay? And then here, if I have 3x here, I really need a 3x on top of this. So as I look across the problem, notice I already have some x's right here. In fact, I have 12x squared. So you can kind of like chop this thing up and, and multiply it together however you want. So you want to be really strategic about this. So I don't want to do this too quickly um, because I, I know sometimes people need to kind of see all the detail. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this x and I'm just going to kind of break it up into these pieces just so you can kind of see the detail. So I'm going to leave the 12 alone for right now. I'm just going to put this x over 
the sine of 2x. I'm going to put this other x over the sine of 3x. And then this cosine of 2x, I'm just going to move it over here, okay? So I've just kind of rearranged things. Okay, so we're almost where we need this to be, but this is not the right number. This needs to be a 2 and this needs to be a 3. Now, we're lucky in this particular problem, this is 12. So 12, the factors of 12 are 2 times 2 times 3. That's what makes 12. So I could actually strategically then kind of chop up this 12 across the factors. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to break this up. This is 2 times 2 times 3. So I'm going to take this 2 and I'm actually going to move it here. And I'm going to take this 3 and move it over here. So now the way that this is going to look is I get the limit as x approaches 0 of, so let's see, this is 2x over sine of 2x. There's one part. And then here's the 3x over sine of 3x. And now I've just got that left over 2 times cosine of 2x. And now we're in business because now we can use that theorem again. So as I'm kind of looking across this whole thing now, so I know that the limit of this piece here, this equals 1, and this will also equal 1. So now I just really have to worry about this, and if I plug 0 into this, this will just get me 2 times 1. So all the factors that are left here are 1 times 1 times 2 times 1. So ultimately my answer is 2. Moving on to C, so this is another um, kind of standard problem that uses the, the theorem that we want to use. So you see the sign here, um, and just best practice is you probably want to break this up into pieces, and then you can kind of go from there. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed over 3x. I've got x over 3x, and then I've got sine of 5x over 3x. Now, because I have everything kind of, um, now that I have these separate terms, to indicate that I am still taking the limit of all of this, I need to put parentheses around this. So before when this was just one singular fraction, I didn't need the parentheses because it's just like one term, but now I've broken this up into three terms. So to be proper about everything, you need parentheses. And so now you can see that you can just kind of simplify things. So I'm going to now rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared over 3. This will be 1 over 3. And then this last part, I'm actually going to break this up into 1 third. I'm going to bring the 3 out times sine of 5x over x. And so I, I broke this 3 just out like this so that I could just kind of concentrate on what I need to do here. And this is very similar to the first example that we looked at. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 5. So I'll, I'll multiply 5 here. And um, you know what? I'll multiply 5 up here. So I've got 5 over 5 kind of being multiplied against this one singular fraction. So hopefully that makes sense. So now let's just see what I'm left with. So now I'm left with the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared over 3 minus 1 third plus 5 thirds times sine of 5x over 5x. Oops, that 5 does not look like a 5, does it? Okay, so now we can go ahead and evaluate everything. So in this case, this part here, this is going to go to 0. This part here, this is just going to equal negative 1 third. And then this part, I've still got the 5 thirds here, so I'm, I'm going to leave it alone, but this will go to 1. So if I just kind of take everything, so this will go to 1. Okay, so now I can just kind of add up these pieces. So I've got 0 minus 1 third plus 5 thirds times 1, and when you simplify all of that, you're just left with 4 thirds. So that would be the answer in this case. And now for the last one. So now I've just got sine of x over sine of 3x. So the, the clue that you still want to use that theorem is that, that you still get 0 over 0. So you're really being forced to kind of use that theorem. And so we're going to have to do kind of an interesting manipulation here because I have no x's, right? So I, I really need an x on top and on bottom. So I'm just going to multiply by the thing that I need. So sorry, my colors just got messed up. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by x over x. Okay. So now I can actually kind of strategically separate these pieces. So 
let's go ahead now and, and just kind of do that separation. So I'm going to take this sine of x over that x on the bottom, and then I've got x over sine of 3x. And now you can see by looking at this piece here that you're going to want to multiply the top and bottom by 3. So I'll put a 3 here and a 3 here. And now I can go ahead and kind of evaluate this. And I'll just set this up in the pieces that I want. So here's sine of x over x. And then this is times, um, so let's see, I'll, I'll bring the, the 3 in the bottom just out because we don't really need it. And then I've got 3x over sine of 3x. And now I can go through by piece. So this part here, this will go to 1. And this part here will also go to 1, right? So I'm left with 1 times 1 third times 1. So my answer in this case is just 1 third. And so that'll cover it for this set of problems. So if you're looking to do even more, I have another video of, of more of these. And also I have a full proof of why this theorem is what it is and, and why it equals 1. So I know sometimes people think, oh, I just want to use, use it or whatever. But when you're in calculus, I always think it's a really great opportunity to expand your mind and expand your thinking. And the theorem for this is, is a little bit tricky. So I think it's really kind of a, a worthy investment in your brain to kind of watch that video if you haven't. So just my two cents. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.